Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. Our lecture today about transverse lie and shoulder presentation. So what we wanted to discuss today? The definition, epidemiology, positions, etiology, diagnosis, mechanism of labor and the management, and lastly, the maternal and fetal complication. What is the definition of shoulder presentation? Please look to this picture. This is a type of male presentation in which the longitudinal axis of the fetus cross the longitudinal axis of the mother. It includes all cases of transverse lie or oblique lie. The curvature of the fetal spine may be up and we call it Dorsal superior, as in this picture. This is the back is up, we call it dorsal superior. Or the back is down, and we call it dorsal inferior. Okay? When the back is down. And the shoulder is the closest part of the fetus to the surface. Okay? What about the oblique lie? In the majority of cases, the head lies on one iliac fossa and the patok on the other side in the region of the hypochondria. While in the minority of cases, the breach of the patok occupy one iliac fossa and the head in the other side at a higher level. As you see here, this is the head down in the iliac fossa and the buttocks on the other side in high up in the right hypochondrial region. This is the majority of the cases of oblique lie. While the minority, the breach is lower down in one iliac fossa, one side, while the head is high up on the other side. This is the minority of cases. But the majority, head is down in oblique lie. In frank transverse, in rare cases, the breech and the head lie on either iliac fossa. This, is this picture is the same level, nearly. The head and the buttocks on either iliac fossa. What about the incidence? The incidence is 0.5% in full term pregnancy. And the, the Transverse lie or shoulder presentation is more common in multibara with lax tube anterior abdominal wall muscle. The position of shoulder presentation or transverse lie can be scapulo anterior right or left or scapulo posterior right or left. As in this picture, this is scapulo anterior and toward the right, so this is right scapulo anterior. And this is scapular posterior toward the right, so we call it right scapular posterior. Of course, right and the left is that of the mother, not the doctor. Right and the left, so this is the right side of the mother, so we call it here right scapular anterior, here right scapular posterior. Second important thing is. Right or left depend on the side of the head. So the side of the head here to the right. So we call it right scapula anterior. The back anterior and the head to the right. So we call it right scapula anterior. In this shoulder presentation. On the other side, in the other picture here, the head to the left. And the back is posterior. Scapula posterior. So we call it left scapula posterior okay this is in this picture right we put the head to the right we call it right scapula anterior and this the head to the right but the scapula to posterior so we call it right scapula posterior okay so what are the different positions either left or or right scapula anterior 
and either right or left scapula posterior. And the denominator, as we said, the scapula or the acromion of the scapula. Left, sacral, uh, left scapula anterior, as in this picture, is the commonest. Why? Because the convexity of the mother fit the concavity of the fetus. So, left scapula anterior is commoner. What is the etiology of shoulder presentation? Maternal causes and the fetal causes. First, maybe a devasic. Second, maybe due to multiparity in 85 of cases nearly. So it is the major cause for transverse lie or shoulder presentation due to lax of the abdominal wall muscle. Abnormal shape of the uterus like bicurrent uterus or subsectate, fully had ramnus, contracted pelvis, placenta bravia, pelvic masses, and ovarian tumors. A while the fetal causes include multiple pregnancy, and we can see it in the second one. And be careful if in twin pregnancy both of them transverse lie you should exclude conjoint twin. Take care about this part. Also prematurity, intratrion gross retardation or restriction, intratrion fetal death, fetal congenital malformation, short umbilical cord, all are fetal causes. How to diagnose? From history, the patient usually multipara. Previous history of transverse lie, Pain or mass in one or the other iliac fossa or in right or left hypochondria. The lump can be filled in the iliac fossa and in the right or left hypochondria. By abdominal examination, the abdomen is bindless, maybe, due to multiparity or extreme lateral obliquity, the abdomen is distended, as you see here, more in transverse diameter, because the baby lie transverse. So, the abdomen distended more in the transverse diameter. The fundus is being lower down, lower down than expected for day. The longitudinal axis of the fetus lies more often obliquely than transverse. That's why you may see a regular enlargement of the abdomen during inspection. By palpation and doing obstetric grabs, from the level lower than expected. Why lower than expected? Because the fundus is empty. Okay? And it is expected that the fundal height is less than 30 cm near term. And of course, this is less than normal vertex presentation. Okay? Because 1 cm equal to 1 week. Fundal grip, as in this picture, there is empty fundus. Umbilical grip, we will feel two pools, buttock on one side and the head on the other side by umbilical grip. By pelvic grip, as in this picture, we will find empty lower uterine segment. And rarely we can feel the prominence of the shoulder and the arm. Auscultation, which part in the abdomen you can hear the fetal heart sound below the umbilicus. Below the umbilicus. Abdominal ultrasonography, of course, confirm the diagnosis, exclude congenital anomalies, detect the placental site, and exclude the presence of polyhydramnus and the presence of multiple pregnancy as well. Vaginal examination during labor, the presenting part, as you see, is high, 
membrane are bulging, but sometimes there is premature rupture of membrane and prolapse of cord and prolapse of arm, as you see here. And the dorsal of the arm belong to the back of fetus, denoting the side of the back of the fetus. And the direction of the thumb, okay, is toward the head, in supinated head, okay? okay. If you wanted to know this is right or left hand, do check hand with the, with the fetal hand. If you do it with right hand, so this is a right hand of the fetus. If you did it with left hand, so this is the left hand of the fetus, okay? When the surface is sufficiently dilated, particularly with after rupture of membrane, you can feel the scapula, you can feel the scapula, the clavicle, wraps, and the axilla may be filled. What is the mechanism of labor? As a rule, no mechanism of labor in transverse life should be anticipated. And the labor will be obstructed. And this is very dangerous because obstructed labor may cause rupture, to try and rupture. If patient is allowed to progress in labor with a neglected or unrecognized transverse lie, one of the following may occur. Impaction. What is impaction? The shoulder will be impacted in the pelvis. And the lower uterine segment becomes stretched and becomes thin. With development of ring between lower uterine segment and the upper uterine segment, and this is called mythological retraction ring. The fetus becomes hyperflexed, the placental circulation is impaired, and the cord prolapsed and compressed, leading to fetal asphyxia and death. This is treated lower uterine segment, which becomes very thin, and with the development of pathological retraction ring, denoting there is impending rupture uterus, is very dangerous. Or the second choice may happen the spontaneous rectification. What does it mean? It means the head correct himself to be cephalic presentation or cephalic presentation and delivered as a cephalic presentation with the trying contraction. Or with the trying contraction, maybe. The shoulder change it, or the transverse light to be changed to breach presentation and delivered as a breach. So either spontaneous rectification to be cephalic, or spontaneous version to be breach presentation. Other possibility: spontaneous expulsion, which is very rare. The baby is expulsion like letter V, as you see in this picture. This happened only in a small dead baby macerated with wide capricious pelvis and this very small baby can be expulsed. Expulsion can happen like letter V as in this picture. Or spontaneous evolution. What is the spontaneous evolution which is also very rare? This had retained above the pelvic brim. Neck elongates greatly. The presenting shoulder is fixed at the outlet. The breech in this picture descend down like this, followed by the breech descend down, followed by the trunk and after coming ahead. We call it spontaneous version inside the pelvic cavity. This is called spontaneous evolution, and this is, of course, very rare. What is the management? Management 
late in pregnancy after maturity of the fetus or even in labor can be by doing external cephalic version by changing the position of the head to be vertex presentation or cephalic presentation by doing external cephalic version one pole is pushed down containing the head and the other pole is pushed up containing the buttocks when the patient is in labor and we did successful external cephalic version do abdominal binder and do rupture of membrane to keep the head down in the lower retrine segment to pass the delivery as vertex presentation you can do external cephalic version after 37 weeks up to during early in labor okay another method is to do internal podalic version during labor and usually this is done with second twin when it when it is a transverse line as in this picture under general anesthesia or epidural anesthesia insert your arm inside you can hug the foot of the baby and bringing down gently okay and deliver the baby as breech so we move the buttocks down and the head will be pushed up and shoulder and the baby will be delivered as breech extraction okay this is called internal budalic version and the breech extraction course done under anesthesia and of course the cervix should be fully dilated can be done in transverse lie with fully dilated cervix but needs obstetrician to be skilled for this procedure and the availability of all equipments for cesarean section at any time if this internal direct version fail and should be done under general or epidural anesthesia as I mentioned And commonly, it is done also in second twin when it is transverse. The best line of treatment in transverse lie or shoulder presentation is elective caesarean section. It is the safest for transverse lie or oblique lie, both for the baby and the mother. And of course, it is better to do it as an elective, not an emergency, because at any time, membrane may rupture and the cord may prolapse, because there is no presenting part in the lower retrine segment. So it's easy for the cord to be prolapsed after rupture of membrane. What if the shoulder presentation become neglected and the impacted the patient is going to be in a case of obstructed labor there is maternal exclusion and distress and the fetal distress shoulder is impacted with prolapsed arm as you see in the picture member ruptured long time ago and like a brain uterus titanically contracted very strong contraction very continuous contraction signs of obstructive labor including cervical edema hanging down like a curve and thinning in the lower uterine segment which becomes a stretched and the development of pathological attraction ring between the lower uterine segment and the upper uterine segment which can be felt vaginally and they can be seen abdominally which increase in its level up with more obstruction the fetus is distressed and may even die 
treatment should be an emergency cesarean section. When, see, when you see a patient like that, you should do emergency cesarean section to save the life of the mother and the baby. Even if the baby is dead, you should do cesarean section to save the life of the mother and to avoid uterine rupture. What is the maternal and the fetal complication of shoulder presentation? Maternal include prolonged labor and exposure, laceration of the genital tract, infection due to prolonged premature rupture of membrane, postpartum hemorrhage, either atonic or traumatic, obstructed labor, and its complication as you try and rupture and internal hemorrhage. In cases with neglected shoulder, the fetal complication may be asphyxia or death or prolapsed cord and fetal distress or operative fetal trauma. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.